It takes bhakti. And again, when I think about this idea of bhakti, it boils down to what do you love? What are you interested in? Um, Mr. Davis would share uh, a story about this cartoon. I think he said he saw it in a newspaper, but it, it had a yogi on a mountaintop and he was sitting there and his enlightened posture and someone with a backpack was was climbing up the mountain and he reaches out to the yogi and the caption says i don't want enlightenment i just want enough to get by right and, and a lot of us approach our spiritual practice in that way and if you just want enough to get by just go to the gym every day and be healthy go talk to your psychologist so you know how to deal with your relationships and the ever-changing fluctuations in the world and be a good person that's all you need to do if you want to experience enlightenment, if you want to experience freedom within your consciousness or kaivalya, you have to learn to navigate these subtle states of experience. And it begins by learning alternate nostril breathing, by learning kriya pranayama. It begins by studying the yamas and niyamas that we discussed yesterday and practicing harmlessness, love, truth, and so on. That's how it begins. But all those things are setting you up to go within, to experience your inner divinity. And in the Yoga Sutras and in Sri Yukteswar's book, The Holy Science, um, Sri Yukteswar says, the way bhakti happens, in fact, let me just quote it for you here. I marked the page. Okay. When man directs all of his organs of sense, so when we went through that meditation, what did I have you do? I had you engage your sense, your capacity to sense things, to feel things. When man directs all his organs of sense towards their common center, the sushumna, the central channel within the spine, this is the door of the internal world. He perceives his God-sent luminous body what is your God-sent luminous body? It's your body of prana, of life force. Many of us think that if we can see the, 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 the luminous body, that we'll see someone just glowing, you know, as if they're a light bulb that's shining. And that's good for making physical images to give you a sense of what's going on. But the way you feel that and sense that is through your inner sensation, your, your ability to feel like the warmth within your body. And, and that's just a way of accessing it. So you, you, you begin to use your feeling of sensation. And then he says, and then you begin to hear a peculiar knocking sound, the pranava shabda, or the word of God. So shabda is sound. Pranava is this universal life force. And in the, in the model of Sankhya philosophy and yoga, remember, it's all about vibration. So nature, prakriti, divine mother, and so on, purusha, spirit, when there's an interaction amongst these things, a vibration develops. And that can begin as light and begin as sound. It's the subtlest thing that we can experience. It's incomprehensible to us. So don't think that you can put words to it really. You can't experience it, but you have to go through the yogic process to get there. But this vibration moves from light and sound until it eventually becomes our capacity to act and perceive. It becomes a mind. And then it eventually becomes uh, the, the, the subtle qualities of sound and touch and taste until it eventually becomes the physical stuff that we experience. So it flows downward. And remember, as I said yesterday, what's up here does not require what's down here to exist because it comes from here. In the same way that my father does not require me to exist but I require my father to exist. You understand that kind of process? So we're learning to, to feel our way back up through this. And the, the majority of Sri Yukteswar's holy science is encouraging you to learn to feel deeply into this pranava, into this life force. And this, the way you start is by feeling the energy of the body. And you do it in such a way that it is non-judgmental. Meaning if you've got arthritis, if you've got an ache or a pain, that's just being alive. So you just look at it as a sensation that you're feeling because we're trying to, in a sense, go beyond duality here. So we, we feel it without judgment. And oftentimes that can be very healing in, in and of itself. Usually when a person has a problem, 
whether it's emotional or, or mental or physical, what makes it worse is the fact that they feel like they've got the problem. Whereas if they just said, I've got an ache or a pain and they moved on, it wouldn't be as debilitating for them. So that's why you move into this space of, of observation. And once you begin to feel deeply into the physical sensations of the body and you begin to feel more subtly into the movement of prana and life force, eventually you begin to hear a sound. And some of you can hear it already, usually in places like this, where a lot of meditation and prayers happen when it gets real quiet. Like for example, if the AC went off and we didn't breathe, um, you could hear a high pitched sound or a ringing, which many people think they've got tinnitus, um, but it's that kind of hum or buzz, or even like a, the sound of crickets. Some people hear like a sound of crickets and it's very faint. This is the initial sound of OM as we can perceive it with our, with our conscious awareness. And as Sri Yukteswar says, true bhakti is baptizing ourselves in this experience because the sound comes from, in a sense, this, this, this highest level of, of, of manifestation as far as we can perceive it. And every time we direct our awareness up to it, we are purifying ourselves, we're lifting ourselves up into it. And anything that's holding us down, it can't keep pulling us down if we want to go up there and experience it, right? Just like if you want to be more successful in life, you can't keep hanging out with your loser buddies, right? Because if you do that, you're just going to keep making the same mistakes that they do. You have to let go of it. And each time you shoot for success, each time you try to improve your life situation, you have to let go of something to move in that direction. Mr. Davis would often say one of the biggest problems uh, that people on the spiritual path have is they don't want to let go of that which no longer serves them. They essentially want to stay who they are and still experience more light in their life. And if there was that light in your life where you were, you wouldn't need to be searching for it, right? So we have to keep this in mind. Now, this takes me to another part of um, the model of creation in, in this yogic philosophy. So Om and Prakriti, Divine Mother, this, this nature of experience, there are three cosmic powers that permeate everything. Three cosmic powers that permeate everything. Um, they're Tamas, Rajas, and Sattva. Now, Tamas is the energy of heaviness, inertia, stability. It limits things. It's like boundaries. It's also ignorance and darkness. Uh, rajas is activity, change, transformation, movement, becoming something. Uh, sattva is light and clarity, buoyancy, wisdom. These three things, anything in nature possesses a ratio of these three things. Your mind possesses a ratio of these three things. How can three things make everything? Okay, well, what are the three primary colors? Anyone know what those are? What is it? Yeah, yellow, blue, and red. So if you take those three colors and you give different proportions of all these three colors, they make every color that you can see. There's a lot of colors, right? Eggshell white, barn house green. You know, you can just go to a paint shop. There's all kinds of colors. Um, so in the same way that these three different colors can make the infinite number of colors, these three powers create our experience. <laughs>